sexy. Hey, my old pal. Can you believe that it's already June? Anyway, today I am going to be talking about NCEA. So if you are at uni right now, congratulations, you survived NCEA, clearly. But I, I'm going to give you school people some hints about NCEA. There are two main challenges uh, which you face in NCEA. The first of these is the subject selection process. If you are entering level 1 NCEA, chances are that you're still pretty indecisive about, well, your interests. Um, you're still kind of iffy on, you know, what you want to do in the future. And the prospect of university is probably nowhere in that brain of yours yet. Am I right? This, though, is why you need to keep your options open. To do this, you got to select a good range of subjects for your first year. So the subjects that you choose in level one will probably provide the foundation of the subjects that you're going to choose and specialize in, um, in levels two and three. So the subjects that I took in level one were maths, because it was compulsory, English, because it was compulsory, science, business studies, music, and media studies. So I mean that is a really solid mix of subjects. And guess what? It was in my first year of NCEA doing media studies that I really discovered I had a bit of a passion for it. And look at me now, I am at uni doing a Bachelor of Arts majoring in media studies. So first year choices in terms of your subjects are quite significant. The second big challenge um, in NCEA is, well, obviously passing. I'm not gonna lie, it is pretty easy to pass with achieved, but you should never, ever, ever, just ever aim for achieved. That is lazy. And I mean, aiming for the bare minimum is gonna make your job a whole lot harder. So once again, even though you may not be concerned with your future at this point in school, um, you really should keep it in the back of your mind. It's kind of logical. The higher your grades, the more opportunities you are handing yourself um, in terms of future study opportunities and yeah, stuff like that. This is specifically important in NCEA level 2 because these are the grades that most tertiary institutions will look at um, in their selection process. So, quite important. My advice for reaching those higher grades in NCEA is that was a drum roll. Always read the assessment criteria, but don't just read the criteria for achieved. Only read the criteria for excellence. Even if you think excellence is a bit out of your reach, if you do follow that criteria, it's going to push you to try harder, it's going to motivate you to put more effort in. Another good thing about reading the excellence criteria only is that it tends to give you some hints as to how you can gain a few extra points. And actually most importantly, uh, if you're striving for excellence, you are going to have a better idea of what the marking criteria is when you reach university and what those expectations are. So I hope this helps you a little bit in terms of surviving in CEA. You should also go and check out Massey University's Career Engine website. Um, this is a thing which asks you basically a whole bunch of questions about your favourite subjects, about your interests, and this actually gives you some ideas as to things you might want to study in the future and what programmes you should take when you come to Massey University. I will see you again next month.